Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's Nat Me and today we're studying the deep cervical fascia of the head and neck Definitely this topic is quite complex however I will make it as easy as possible as I can for you because I have gone through very deep understanding from two three sources of this topic and inshallah hope that when this video ends you guys have this topic on your fingertips so do not forget to subscribe to my channel and let's get right into it So what is the deep cervical fascia? It's basically the deep fascia of the neck that lies deep to the skin, subcutaneous tissue with the superficial fascia and obviously the platysma, right? The deep cervical fascia is divided into layers. Now those layers are what we are going to study today in depth. Before we even get into the layers, we need to know why there is a division of the cervical fascia into so many layers. As you can see the layers are visible right here. You can see this is one layer and then there is this layer and then there is this layer. So what is the purpose of all of these layers? The is that it divides your neck into planes. There are different planes. So if there is an infection, then that infection remains within that plane or within that layers boundaries. Even for surgeries, when surgeons perform surgery, they can perform surgery within layers. And when they know the importance of structures, they know how to exactly move through those structures. Before we get started talking about the deep cervical fascia in depth, I just want you all to get a brief overview so that you can understand the concept of it better, all right? So the deep cervical fascia has all of these parts. These are like six parts. Let me just give you an overview of where these parts exactly are located. So this is basically the cross section of your neck. You are viewing the neck from the top suppose, all right? This is the anterior part and this is the posterior part. The first layer of the deep cervical fascia is the investing layer. Now, this is lying the most superficial just so deep to the superficial fascia it's lying and it is enclosing your entire neck like a collar all right so this entire area around this pink shaded uh, boundary line you can see is the investing layer all right i just want you to know the four corners of the neck uh, have the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscles all right so these two are the sternocleidomastoids and these are the trapezius muscles it is enclosing these muscles the investing layer we have the second layer which is the pretracheal layer over here you can see this is the thyroid gland the trachea and the esophagus enclosing this all around is your pretracheal layer along with these muscles these are the infrahyoid muscles that you can see so the pretracheal layer is taking care of this entire anterior portion of your neck all right uh, another important thing is that the pretracheal layer posteriorly is blending with a fascia known as the buccopharyngeal fascia buccopharyngeal fascia is forming the posterior part of this area all right and then comes your prevertebral layer the prevertebral layer is basically taking control of the entire posterior side uh, near the vertebral column the prevertebral layer as you can see is enclosing these uh, posterior muscle these this is the scalenus anterior the scalenus medius between them both are the brachial and the cervical plexuses this is the levator scapulae of both sides this is the scalenus posterior and all the par paravertebral muscles the prevertebral layer anteriorly has an anterior subdivision known as the alar fascia this alar fascia as you can see is visible right here all right so what is the point of this alar fascia is that basically the buccopharyngeal fascia and the prevertebral fascia between them lies a space called the retropharyngeal space it is divided into two parts this is the anterior part of that space and the posterior part of that space behind the alar fascia is known as the dangerous area of the neck all right and then we have on either side we have the major vessels of the neck the carotid and the jugulars basically all these fascias all these three fascias combined they are contributing to formation of carotid sheath enclosing these major vessels all right so that was a brief overview now let's go ahead and talk about each part in depth let's begin the layers of the deep cervical fascia the first layer is known as the investing layer all right Investing layer of the deep fascia is the most superficial layer of this deep fascia. It is the layer basically which encloses your entire neck like a collar. On the four corners of the neck right now you can see the sternocleidomastoids and the trapezius muscles. Between them you know that this is the posterior triangle of the neck. This is the posterior triangle of the neck. And as you can see this investing layer forms the roof of the posterior triangle of the neck. So that is an important feature of the investing layer. Now let's talk about the attachments of the investing layer. Superiorly the investing layer goes up to this entire area. 
basically the lower border of the skull basically it has to superiorly go and attach to all the structures that are lying on the lower parts of the skull so what are these structures starting from posteriorly you can see the external occipital protuberance then you can see the superior knuckle lines you can see the styloid process the mastoid process and finally the base of the mandible what about inferiorly obviously inferiorly it will go down to the lower part of the neck right what lies in the lower part of the neck you have the spine of the scapula you have the clavicles you have the sternum posterior attachment of the investing layer is to the c7 spine whereas anteriorly it goes to attach to the hyoid bone as you can see right here this bone is the hyoid bone that's where it attaches anteriorly so now that we've talked about the attachments of the investing layer let's go ahead and talk about some special features of the investing layer most important feature is that it forms the roof of both the anterior and posterior triangles of the neck another important thing is that it forms the stylo mandibular ligament that we'll talk about in a while third important part of the investing layer is the structures that it encloses so it encloses two muscles two glands two spaces two muscles that it encloses are the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius that i showed on the four corners of the neck right the two glands that it encloses are the ones lying on the face one is the parotid gland and one that is lying beneath the mandible this is the submandibular gland and the two spaces that it encloses is the supra sternal and the supra clavicular spaces now let's go ahead and talk about all of this in depth beginning from the two glands that it is enclosing so guys what happens is that it encloses the parotid gland let's go ahead and talk about that all right investing layer of the deep fascia between the mastoid process and the angle of mandible it splits to enclose your parotid gland so let's suppose that this is your parotid gland right so it has a superficial lamina and a deep lamina all right superficial lamina of the parotid gland is thick whereas the deep lamina is thin basically your investing layer of deep cervical fascia forms the fibrous capsule of the parotid gland let's talk about the deep lamina deep lamina of the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia is going to be attached to the tympanic plate of the skull and it will be attached to the styloid process all right and below it will go to attach to the mandible all right the part between the styloid process and the mandible is known as the stylo mandibular ligament very important ligament although it is thin in most of its part but in the stylo mandibular ligament part it is thick the stylo mandibular ligament has an important function that it separates the parotid gland from the submandibular gland which is lying where just beneath the mandible right over here in this area there is a very important significance of the stylo mandibular ligament which is that it is pierced by the external carotid artery do not forget this why because when surgeons are trying to excise the submandibular gland which is lying right here they have to be very careful because external carotid artery is lying very close to that submandibular gland as stylo mandibular ligament is lying right there all right on that note let's talk about the submandibular gland let's suppose that this is your mandible bone we're basically viewing the mandible bone from the back right here so here is where the submandibular gland is kept so So let's suppose that this is the submandibular gland this is the mandible the investing layer of the deep fascia will have a superficial lamina which will be lying below obviously and a deep lamina which will be lying on top of the gland obviously the superficial lamina is attached to the lower border of the body of the mandible whereas the, the deep lamina is attached to the mylohyoid line this line you can see right here Now let's talk about the spaces that it encloses. The first was the suprasternal space. It is also known as the space of Burns. All right. In this space, very important things lie: the sternal heads of the sternocleidomastoid, the jugular venous arch, the interclavicular ligaments, and a lymph node. 
Another important space that it encloses is known as the supraclavicular space. In that space lie your supraclavicular nerves and the external jugular vein. Some cutaneous vessels lie in it. Now let's move on to the next layer of the deep cervical fascia. Now let's talk about the pretracheal layer of the deep cervical fascia. There is a layer that is enclosing this area right here. This is the anterior part of your neck. All right. In the anterior part of the neck, what do you see? This you can see the thyroid gland. Behind the thyroid gland, you can see the trachea. Behind that, you can see the esophagus. All right. So this entire area, along with these muscles, is enclosed by your pretracheal layer. As the name says it, pretracheal meaning before the trachea. Pretracheal layer is responsible for forming capsule of the thyroid gland. All right. It has a visceral part and a muscular part. The muscular part of the pretracheal layer will cover all these infrahyoid muscles. Whereas the visceral part will enclose these viscera. These are the thyroid gland, the trachea, the esophagus, probably the recurrent laryngeal nerves lying on either side. Some parathyroid glands also added here. So all of that area it is enclosing. All right. So what are the attachments of the pretracheal layer? As you can see over here, this is the hyoid bone, the thyroid cartilage of the larynx, the cricoid cartilage of the larynx, and then we have the thyroid gland beneath that, right? So superiorly, the pretracheal layer is attached to hyoid bone, then to the thyroid cartilage, more specifically the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage, then the cricoid cartilage, and then it goes down to enclose your thyroid gland, all right? And inferiorly, the pretracheal layer extends down. This is, this is very important. It extends down to the anterior mediastinum because that is where the fibrous pericardium lies. It blends with the fibrous pericardium. Why is this of importance? Is that if there is any infection within this layer, neck infections can easily get transferred to the anterior mediastinum because of the attachment of the pretracheal layer that it goes all the way down into the anterior mediastinum therefore neck infections can enter the anterior mediastinum apart from that posterior part of the thyroid gland is attached to the cricoid cartilage on either side via these two strong bands these bands are known as the ligaments of berry what do you think is the purpose of that the purpose of that is that the thyroid gland is fixed. Now it cannot fall down into the mediastinum or into the thorax. Why? Because the ligament of berry have suspended the thyroid gland. So it stays fixed. Whereas its attachment with the hyoid bone can elevate. All right. Lying on either side of the pretracheal fascia are the major vessels of the neck. Pretracheal fascia is actually going to form a constituent of the wall of the carotid sheath. Another important part is that posteriorly this pretracheal fascia is continuous with the buccopharyngeal fascia. Do not forget this point. So you can say this part is the buccopharyngeal fascia. That was all you needed to know about the pretracheal layer. So let's move ahead and talk about the prevertebral layer. The prevertebral layer of the cervical fascia over here you can see this is the entire prevertebral layer. You can see that it lies close to the vertebra right here as you can see and it also mostly contains all the vertebral muscles these are all the vertebral muscles these are the longus coli this is the scalenus anterior this is a scalenus medius the scalenus posterior the levator scapulae and all of these are the muscles paravertebral muscles superiorly the prevertebral layer is attached to the base of the skull Inferiorly, it goes ahead and splits into two layers. There is an anterior layer and a posterior layer. All right, the posterior layer becomes continuous with the anterior longitudinal ligament, whereas the anterior layer is known as the alar fascia. All right, so the anterior subdivision of the prevertebral fascia is known as the alar fascia. Do not forget this. This is the alar fascia this is the prevertebral fascia what is the boundary of it anteriorly is anterior to the prevertebral layer is the retropharyngeal space do not forget this the retropharyngeal space is basically between the buccopharyngeal fascia 
and the prevertebral fascia all right the alar fascia is dividing this retropharyngeal space into two parts an anterior part and a posterior part this part is known as the dangerous area of the neck because if any infection occurs here it can spread to the entire vertebral column so let's talk about some important features of the prevertebral layer the important features are that inside it there are the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery do not forget and where do they lie between your scalenus anterior and your scalenus medius between them this is the scalenus anterior and scalenus medius this is your plexus and the subclavian artery when the brachial plexus is going to go to the lateral side laterally it will extend obviously into the arm it carries the prevertebral fascia along with it so when it extends laterally it takes a covering of the prevertebral layer with it and this covering is known as the axillary sheath within this axillary sheath lies what the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery subclavian and axillary veins lie outside this sheath all right since the prevertebral layer inferiorly extends into the superior mediastinum therefore any infection in the prevertebral layer will also spread to the superior mediastinum and now let's talk about the carotid sheath this is also one of the parts of the deep cervical fascia the carotid sheath as we already talked about is right here the by definition it is a condensation of fibroareolar tissue around main vessels of the neck so these are the main vessels of the neck namely most medial is the internal carotid artery laterally is the internal jugular vein and you can see right here between them both is the vagus nerve all right so how is the carotid sheath formed the carotid sheath is formed with an anterior and a posterior wall the anterior wall is constituted all the layers of the deep cervical fascia we just talked about are all basically giving contributions to the entire formation of the carotid sheath as you can see anteriorly you can see the investing layer coming here and the pretracheal layer giving some of its contribution and finally posteriorly the prevertebral layer is giving some contribution in forming the carotid sheath the contents of the carotid sheaths i just said internal carotid artery even the common carotid artery are Uh, the arteries of the carotid sheath apart from that the internal jugular vein here's the vagus nerve another important feature is that anterior wall of the sheath consists of the ansa cervicalis this is a loop that is formed between c1 and c2 uh, nerves the, the this is lying embedded in the anterior wall of the carotid sheath apart from that the deep cervical fascia also has the buccopharyngeal fascia that i just talked about the buccopharyngeal fascia was basically responsible for covering up the buccinator muscle and the pharyngeal constrictor muscles it was above when it came below it blended with the pretracheal layer and between the buccopharyngeal fascia and the prevertebral fascia was the retropharyngeal space which was divided into two parts via the alar fascia i hope that makes sense to you so that was all about the deep cervical fascia its various layers and the important things you need to know about each layer so i really hope you benefited with the lecture of the deep cervical fascia today i would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and leave a like and comment on my video thank you so much for watching